So, the Mercedes EQS Saloon is actually a great car underneath. The exterior styling though, not so much. The interior is not that bad and is livable though if you get the hyper screen. Can Mercedes do better? I think they can. This is what else they have come up with. This is the new Mercedes EQS SUV. Is it any better though? Let's find out. Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Cars and More. This is the number one place to be for car news and reviews. Sit back, buckle up, let's go. So, let's start with the styling first, as this was not the strong point for the EQS saloon. Don't get me wrong, it was not that bad, but it could have been better. With the EQS SUV, it is better. The front is like the EQS saloon, but we have a much bigger grille with the Mercedes star mesh pattern. We also have a light bar connecting the LED digital headlights. Lower down we have a reasonable central air vent and some acceptable side vents. The bonnet has also been sculpted nicely and from the front it looks like a proper SUV. Moving around to the side it is much better than the EQS saloon. The silhouette is like a Mercedes GLC and not an egg shape like the EQS saloon. Yes this car is still aerodynamic but they have designed it in a way that does not affect the shape of the car. We get some side steps and some plastic cladding on the side as well as these dice wheels. We also get pop out door handles and some nicely designed wing mirrors. Moving round to the back, things start to go downhill, but every EQ Mercedes is like this, so it will be something that I will have to get used to. We have some thin tail lights that have this 3D design in them, which I do quite like, and we also get this nice light bar, which again, I do like. But what I don't like is the placement of the Mercedes logo. To me, it just feels like it's too low down. Because of this, the number plate has moved onto the bumper, which does not feel right for a Mercedes SUV, especially with all of their SUVs. The number plates are on the boot lid. The bumper does have a nice design though with chrome and plastic bumper cladding to make it look like an SUV. We also get a nice spoiler. Let's have a look at the battery and motor options that you can have with the Mercedes EQS SUV. So to start with for the battery and motor options you have the EQS 450 Plus. This has 353 brake horsepower and is rear wheel drive. It can also do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 6.7 seconds and it has a range of 410 miles. Next up is the EQS 450 4Matic. This has the same power output but this time it's 4 wheel drive. This reduces the 0 to 62 time down to 6 seconds and the range is to 381 miles. Finally, the last option is the EQS 580 formatic. This has 533 brake horsepower and it is also four wheel drive. This means it can do 0 to 62 in 4.6 seconds and this also has a range of 381 miles. The price of the Mercedes EQS SUV starts at £129,170. So, getting inside, if you are familiar with the EQS Saloon and the EQE Saloon and the EQE SUV, then you will know this layout very well. On this model, we have the familiar hyperscreen which suits this car very well. On other cars without the hyperscreen though, it just does not look right and feels outdated and very cheap. This is what lets the EQS SUV saloon and EQE SUV and saloon interior down. If you want an EQS, EQS SUV or EQE and or EQE SUV then you have to go for the hyperscreen to make it look more high end. We also get this nice steering wheel but like other Mercedes it has touch sensitive buttons which are annoying and can be fiddly to use on the move. There are some nice premium materials though and I like the tour car design and it's like every other EQ Mercedes. 
Also, the MBUX graphics are very high-end and are very good for this type of car. Right, let's check out the two rows of rear seats. So, considering this is the electric S-Class of SUVs, you won't be surprised that you get premium materials in the back. You get electrically operated seats that move, ambient lighting, two-zone rear climate control and heated rear seats with USB-C ports. You also get an armrest, or you can upgrade so the middle seat folds down to show a tablet, which will let you control features like rear blinds. You also have rear screens that are connected to the front seat headrests, like an S-Class. You can even get massage seats in this row too. Headroom is more than enough and you have plenty of legroom. Sitting in the third row is actually easily doable. Legroom is just about enough and so is headroom. Anyone over 6 foot no will struggle but if you are under you can easily do a long journey in these seats. You also get some air vents for the third row too. Let's check the boot out. So opening the boot you will actually find that there is plenty of boot space. With the second row seats all the way back you get 645 litres. But with the second row all the way forward this increases to 800 litres. With the second row folded down you get a full 2020 litres of space. With all of the seats up you get 195 litres of space which is still not that bad. That's enough for about 4 weekend bags. So what do I think about the Mercedes EQS SUV then? Well it is better than the EQS saloon in terms of styling. The battery and motor options are also very good and the interior is great if you go for the hyperscreen. It is a good SUV and the only other car that rivals this at the moment is the Tesla Model S. If there was a BMW iX7, then I think that would be much better than the EQS personally. If they had implemented a smaller MBUX screen in the EQ cars much better, I think it would actually improve the car no end. You see, some people don't want to go for the hyperscreen because it's more money but also it can be very distracting as there is a lot more screen real estate. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.